Hey guys, today we'll learn something about GitHub and how to integrate VS Code with GitHub. Now, uh, just to give an idea, GitHub is not just for developers. You can keep any kind of documents or text files within GitHub. So if you're a writer or a blogger and if you're writing your content, it is completely fine to GitHub to store the, the articles you're writing or the blogs you're writing. So you can use any kind of editor to write your content and push the contents to the remote repository in GitHub. So let's get started. Uh, Let's open GitHub first and then we'll go back to how to integrate that to VS Code. So when you open github.com, it will ask you to create a new account first. Uh, you need to sign up on GitHub to use GitHub. This is completely free, so just provide your email address and create a new GitHub account. I think there are some paid plans for GitHub for enterprises or of course if you want to create a lot of private repositories but generally you can simply get started for free and you can probably uh, create hundreds of repositories uh, with the free account. There are some limitations so we can obviously go to pricing and probably compare the plans here so as you can see there is a free tire there is an enterprise tire and there is a teams so i think you can yeah so i think you can for the free tire you can create unlimited private and public repositories so there's absolutely no reason for you not to create an account and start learning about github so just create the free account first and now let's go to GitHub and uh, log into our accounts. Once you log in for the first time, or if even if you have repositories, uh, generally you can see all your created repositories on the left. But if you do not have anything, you can simply go and create a new repository. Now think of repository like a project, or if you're a writer, say, think of it as a book name or an article name or a particular blog. So every repository has, is like a single individual project and you can have hundreds and hundreds of files within that repository. Uh, so what we'll do is create a new repository and then uh, take on from there. So what we do is like go to click on new and create a new repository. Uh, let's call the repository name as a dummy repository and let's put a description. This is a dummy repo. I can either make this public or private. So let's keep it as public, no issues there. And then you can simply click on this button to create the repository. Now before doing that, you can add a readme file. Generally for actual projects, uh, you add a readme file which has instructions regarding the checkout of this GitHub repository, how to run this, how to uh, kind of commit or build the project, those kind of instructions. But uh, for now, we'll skip that part because this will be just for a simple file tutorial. So I will remove this. I will not add any readme file or I will, won't add any license. Again, if you are an enterprise and you're creating some kind of product, uh, you want to add some kind of license information, those you can add it here. So we'll skip those. Uh, simply go to create repository. And this is done. Now I can see uh, under my account, I have a dummy uh, repository created um, and I do not have any files. So these are some basic instructions how to use command lines and create, a, you know, create a commit or create a file. So we'll do all these processes, but not from terminal. We'll learn to do it via VS Code. So let's open VS Code. So let me open Visual Studio Code. So in first time you're launching Visual Studio Code, uh, you may not have GitHub integration, so we need to authenticate this first. So let's choose a theme first. I like the Solarized Dark one and I'm good. So on the left side, you can see something as source control here on Visual Studio Code. Simply click on this and then you have an option to clone repository. So when you're working on a particular project on a VS Code, at any point of time, your source code running on this VS code is connected to a single repository. You can of course have multiple windows of VS code running with multiple repository, but any, at any point of time you're committing on one repository or one project. So here it gives you an option to clone that particular repository and whatever the code base is there in your remote or in the GitHub, you need to obviously keep a local copy of that running in your local. So whatever changes you're doing or whatever coding or writing you're doing is in your local and then you commit that code and push it to your remote repository. So you have two versions running, one is in your local and one is in your remote. So what we do is first click on clone repositories and this gives you an option to clone from GitHub. VS Code is not just limited to GitHub, you can obviously provide a URL of anything else. It could be GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, 
SVN, any kind of uh, you know remote repository or any kind of versioning system. But uh, we will show you here how to connect to GitHub. So when you click on clone from GitHub, it will ask you to authenticate or sign into GitHub. So we'll click on allow. And this will open up your GitHub account. It will ask you to uh, log in with your username and password. Uh, I will click on continue here. So what I'm doing now is authenticating VS Code to uh, give get access to my GitHub account. And um, here uh, I will just click on choose application. Uh, so allow this to open VS Code links. Click on close choose application and open link. So once that is done now my VS code is connected to github so now it showed uh, shows up all the repositories I have on github once you can simply go and close this so the token which you see is primarily needed to connect to github with VS code so now I can see the repository just now created uh, the dummy repository so I click on this one and now it will ask me where to store this information so let me create a, a folder in my home itself I can uh, create any folder so I will create something as uh, say a workspace so workspace is something where I keep all my codes think of it like a, a, a kind of a placeholder in my local where any kind of coding I do I keep it in the workspace so you can create your own folders or your own paths uh, you can keep it anywhere within your system within your documents downloads uh, I would suggest either do it in a home or documents generally um, and then uh, you click on the select repository location so what this will do is check out this project check out this dummy project whatever it's there and put all the contents in this workspace so inside workspace you can have you know multiple repositories checked out and they will have all connected to the github so let me click this, select this repository connection so once I'm done it gives me an option to open in a new window or open I will simply do an open so this will replace with the dummy project as you see uh, I will simply trust this so currently my github or uh, github dummy project does not have any files anything checked out hence it's blank so what we will do is push our first code to github from vs code so we'll right click here and create a new file so let me create a file as abc.txt and this is my first file and i save it i do a control s save it once i've done now this code is still in my local if I go to my uh, dummy repositories there is no file because this is very much in my local so where is the location it's the home project when we just now created workspace you will now see a dummy project has been created so this dummy name is exactly same as the repo name and within that I have this file so this is my local folder which my VS code is talking to so the, this path of this VS code is actually the dummy project path right so whatever I put in here you will see in this particular folder but this is completely local I need to first I need to I need to commit this code to make it uh, appear on the github remote so for that I will go to this version control or source version and I can right click this file and I can stage the changes so staging is a process where you are actually preparing your files to be committed so I simply click on stage the complaints and there it shows the staged changes once that's done I can add a commit message so commit message tells github like or it shows in github what I am committing exactly so this is very crucial for yourself or if you're working in a collaborative environment to tell others in this particular committed uh, in this particular commit what files you have committed and what is the purpose of those commits so this tells other developers what actually you have done in that commit so I would just put this is my first commit now once I'm ready to commit I simply go and click on this button so once I click on this button it will go and commit my code in the get but it is still in my local this has been committed but this commit is still in my local and it has not been pushed to the remote repository so at this point of time if I go here and refresh I still won't be seeing any file right because this is still in my very much in my local so for pushing this to my remote repositories or to my remote desktop or uh, on the server what I do is click on this push so I have to commit first and then come back here and push once this is pushed this piece of code now has been uh, pushed to github and it gives you an uh, option whether you want to fetch it at intervals uh, we'll just do it and ask me later so what you can do if you're working on a, on a collaborative environment you can continuously keep pushing like every time you push it will do a fetch and you know update your code with the latest in the remote but uh, we can do that later as well 
So let us go here now and click on this dummy project. Now you can see a new file has been created. So whatever I had in my local that has now been pushed to the remote. So we can continue this step and add more files. So I will show another one. So we can do a df.txt. This is second file. Save it. I can add something in the first file. This is line 2. Save it. So in case I have multiple files, they go to this version control. I can individually right click and stage the changes. Uh, go to this uh, source control, right click and stage or I can simply click here and then I can stage the changes together. So stage all changes. So you can choose what you want to stage. So you may have created a new file, but you do not want to commit at this point of time. You can simply choose and select only certain files to be committed. So this is my second commit and I commit it. Once that's done, I simply go and push it. Done. So now my remote will have two files, uh, this and this, and uh, it shows my commit messages. This is my first commit, there's my second commit. So whatever I've committed, it actually shows uh, here. So I have two commits here. It shows my first commit and my second commit. So you can see your commit history as well. And if you want, you can even see like within that commit, what you have you committed. It actually shows a comparison, what you've done. So that's how you generally do in actual development. You make your commits and then others can see your commits. So now let's learn how to pull something from the remote repository. Suppose you are working on a collaborative environment and somebody has actually made changes in the GitHub or they have committed some more changes from their side on GitHub and you want to get those changes in your local. Now let's take this file abc.txt and I have only these two lines but what we will do is go to this abc.txt and add a third line. So I can simply go to github and edit this file and add a third line. This is line 3 and I will add a commit message updated first file and then commit my changes. Here there is no concept of push because you are doing it right inside github so there is no push once you commit it's done. Uh, but my local is still having these old files, right? And uh, this particular file, I have three lines, but my local has two lines. So what we'll do is we go to, uh, we go to the version control here, click on this and click on pull. So this click on this three dots and click on pull. So this will pull in my changes from my remote. And as I see my third line has appeared now. So that's how you do a pull from GitHub. So now we have learned how to create a new repositories, how to do a push, how to do a pull. Now we'll see what is a merge conflict. What is the concept of merge conflict and how do I resolve it from VS Code? So what's a merge conflict? Suppose somebody has done a change on a particular file in the remote repository or somebody has pushed some changes to the remote and whereas I as a developer, I'm also touching that particular file and doing some changes on top of that or doing some changes on that file. Now, how does Git know like which change is the right change and which is the wrong change? At certain point of time, if I if my changes are in the same position in the file or in the code, the Git has no idea which is the right one, which is the wrong one. So at that point of time, Git will show a merge conflict, and then you have to go and manually resolve that conflict. So let let's take a scenario. So I have three lines here, and the remote also have three. So I will add something as this is another line from my local. And I save this. By the time somebody has already pushed some changes in my remote. So let me go and edit this file and add another file. This is another line added from remote. Correct. And then update again. Just put any commit message and comment. Now this has been commented. So my GitHub is in this state. After line 3, one space, and then I have this. Whereas in my local, after line 3, one space, I have this. Now how does Git know? which is correct, whether this one or this one. Git should not blindly just go and push this change and override this change on Git remote, right? Because there is a different change there. If you try to now commit this change, let's go here, uh, stage, the, stage, the, uh, stage the changes and commit it. Commit a new line, commit it. When I try to push this, see what happens. It throws an error, says that can't push refs to remote, try pulling first. So it, it, it tries to commit this code or try to push this change to GitHub, but it encounters an issue because in the same place we have two different codes. So it asks me to pull it first. So we'll cancel this and try to pull first. Once I do, 
it shows me a merge conflict so this exactly is a, what a merge conflict looks like so you have a different change in your remote and I have a different change in my local so in my local it shows this current changes this is another line from my local whereas from the remote incoming changes which it's referring as incoming changes this is another line now what do I do so I have four options here I can accept my current changes so as a developer I know say say this is supposed to be the latest line and not this one I will accept the current change so my local will get overridden in the re remote or I scratch my local changes and accept only the incoming changes so my local will be gone and whatever it's in github that will be the final one or accept both the changes and of course before that I can compare the changes when I click on compare changes it will show me that on a same particular line I have this line and this line so I know what to choose so I can simply compare the code or line and see what are the changes so I can close this and then suppose I want to keep both the changes so my remote one as well as my local one so I click click on accept both the changes so now I have both the changes added here I simply save this file and then I stage all merge changes because I've merged two different codes from my remote and from my local stage all the merge changes this commit message is auto generated because I'm merging from remote so this is auto generated let's not touch it this is the standard way to tell github or to uh, see in the commit history when a merge has been done and I will simply click on commit so this has been committed now I simply do a push so now both my local and remote lines have been added if I go to github and refresh both these lines has been added so that's how we generally merge a code or resolve a merge conflict uh, when you're doing any kind of development. So we learned how to do a, how to create a remote Git repository, how to do pull, how to do push, how to do a merge and how to resolve a merge conflict. So I think uh, that's all I had for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and we can look further uh, or learn further about GitHub and the different commands we use in GitHub. Thank you.